understand Is that the way So bad, I won't regret and won't forget the way you smile, the way you walk. Please stay a while. all I'm asking for And if you feel you still must go Then leave me Case history number 2310, Marion. Left home at 17 after an incident with her stepfather, whom she claims insisted on tucking her up every night, even though he knew that she liked to sleep in the nude. Eventually, of course, the inevitable happened, and tucking turned into um, sexual intercourse. She first came to see me two months ago. Since the incident with her stepfather, she's been unable to enjoy a normal sexual relationship. On her previous visit, she's been morose, I'm somewhat reluctant to discuss the matter openly. Today's appointment is for 3.30 p.m. <laughs> you seem much more relaxed today, Marion. Mm, I feel it. In fact, I feel marvellous. Good. Does that account for your clothes? Oh, I hope you don't think... No, no, you look extremely attractive today. In fact, you have a beautiful body. Thank you. And now, are you learning to use it? To attract men, do you mean? Yes. Does that thought excite you? Of course. Well, I, I always used to do it with David. Your stepfather? Yes. He took a great interest in my netball practice. I was on the team and he was my coach. He'd spend hours making me bounce around the courts. To improve your game? No, to watch my boobs bobbing. Oh, I see. Mm, so did David eventually. Well, one day I didn't put on a bra, and, well, as you can see, I'm fairly... Quiet. Yes. Well, I always take a hot shower after practice, and I ran into the shower room, took off my clothes, and there was David, already under it. It was a terrible experience. He attacked you? No, he was having a cold shower. We eventually warmed it up together, of course, Oh, that sounds awful, doesn't it? Not at all. The relationship developed from there? Yes. He became my tutor in many things. When did your mother notice? Uh, not at first. She still thought of me as a little schoolgirl. And David as a loyal, loving husband. Well, he never went out. Well, he didn't need to, really, with two women under one roof, did he? When did she find out? Well, David used to come to my room at night to help me with my homework. 
Mum used to watch the telly downstairs, and this particular night we told her we were doing geography. Quite fitting, really. <laughs> well, anyway, this particular night we were making more noise than usual, and, well, just as I came, David came, and then Mum came, if you see what I mean. I into the room? Yes. Well, David said that we finished the geography and moved on to biology. She wasn't having it. Well, there was an awful scene, and David ended up saying that I had led him on. And Mum telling me to leave home. This had a severe effect on your sex life. It had a severe effect on my whole life. I had nowhere to live. Yes, I, I realise that, but it made you sexually reticent. Yes. I just couldn't get it together with anyone after that. Why was that, do you think? When you get thrown out of your own house for having sex there, it makes you a bit shy of having it anywhere, doesn't it? Well, when I eventually found a flat and the landlord suggested a little something in advance, well, I slapped his face. And all he wanted was the rent. But other men tried. Oh, yes. I had lots of boyfriends. Oh, we'd go out dancing or out to dinner. The first couple of dates were OK, but eventually, of course, they expected me to supply the dessert. When it came to it, I... I just froze. Well, it sounds a bit dramatic, doesn't it? No, not at all. Anyway, they all thought I was just a frigid tease, and I lost them all. You uh, wanted sex without involvement? Yes. I had a dream. Well, not a dream, really, since I used to think about it more during the day. No, more of a fantasy, I suppose, that I would meet a man, and a beautiful man, and at that first meeting, without knowing anything about him, and the possibility of never meeting him again, having really great sex with him. I can see from the look on your face, Marion, and from your mood today, that this has happened. Would you like to tell me about it? Well... I answered an advertisement in the newspaper for a secretary to a company director. My shorthand and typing speeds are very good, and so I was invited along for an interview. Mr. Johnson was his name, and I went to see him last Wednesday. Yes? Miss Parsons? About the vacancy, sir. My replacement. Oh, yes, of course. Send her in. Come in. To say the least, he wasn't quite what I'd been used to meeting at these interviews. I just stood there, speechless. How do you do, Miss Parsons? Hello. Do uh, come in. Sit down. Let me take your coat. Hmm? Thank you. Just, uh... Right, well, I'll uh, just drop down some particulars. Yes, I soon realised that he had more in mind than how many words I could type in a minute. He asked me all the usual questions about qualifications and previous employers, but I could tell that he was thrown off balance by me. You felt that you'd sexually aroused him? I knew it. He couldn't keep his eyes off me. And you encouraged this? Oh, yes. Well, I did lean over the desk a little to point out a particular line in a reference from a previous employer. His face turned as red as beetroot, and his hands started to tremble ever so slightly while he was writing. Were you attracted to him immediately? Oh, absolutely. He was lovely. His eyes were as brown as Omar Sharif's. At what point did you realise you might live out your fantasy with this particular man? When his tongue started to lick my nipples. What? Oh, my little joke. Uh, Please continue. Um, he decided to give me a shorthand test. Well, uh, I'd already thought how nice it would be to give him a lovely longhand test. He gave you a shorthand test? Yes. Now, Miss Parsons, this won't be difficult. I, um, promise to go slowly for you. If you could just, uh, take down whatever I say. Of course. Anything, Mr. Johnson? Uh, sirs, further to your letter of the 12th inst, 
This is to inform you that the consignment of ball bearings has not yet arrived. Full stop. Complications will arise in the manufacturing process if we do not take delivery immediately. Your contract is to provide good balls. Uh, where, where, where was I? Uh, you had just got to, uh, good balls. Yes, uh, to, to, uh, provide good balls by the 10th of the, uh, of this month. Uh, you have a good deal of duty to honour this contract, etc., etc. That'll do. Now, now, if you could just um, type that up for me, please. Yes. Oh, uh, where do I find the paper? Oh, it's in the bottom drawer. Oh. Here, let me. I've got some. You certainly have. Line, sir. Oh, uh, tell her I'm in an important meeting at the moment and can't be disturbed. Her credentials must be good. That's why I'm firing her. Now, uh, how are we doing? Oh, it's all right. I can read quite easily from there. That was really the moment I knew when I felt his warm hand on my shoulder. Were you nervous? Trembling, not from nerves, more excitement. And the letter? Oh, I'd made a complete ball for that, if you'll pardon the pun. Instead of good deal of duty, I'd typed. God, I feel fruity. I had no idea that my innocent typing error was going to have quite such a dramatic effect on him. He seemed to be lost for words for a moment, and then started to undo all of my good work. It became obvious that there were just a couple of points he wanted a closer look at. Good deal of duty. God, I feel fruity. I felt that he was getting very excited by this and thought I ought to loosen his tie before he got out of control. It seems that it wasn't just his tie that needed loosening, and his shirt disappeared as well. Then he decided to show me his office, and obviously thought I would appreciate it more without my clothes on. I didn't object, as I thought it was all part of the interview. Ah, uh ah, -uh, my turn. Well, fair is fair. If you intend to run a nudist camp, you must expect to dress like the guests. I hope you've got a license for that. Then he put his finger on my soft spot. Do you want to pull them off? What? Do you want to pull them off? Oh, um... I better answer it. Might look odd if I don't. It looks pretty odd when you do. Yes? It's your wife again, sir. She says she must speak to you. I am sorry to disturb you. OK, I put her through. Hello? Oh, Myra. Yes. Yeah, well, I, I know I promised to ring you, but I've been extremely busy. I've got a deal that I must sit on till it comes off. Yeah, all right, all right. It, it, I have thought about it, and the answer is still no. Well, I don't care if your mother ties herself to the railings of Buckingham Palace. She's not coming on holiday with us. Hmm? Uh, Moira, I must go. Something's just come up. Yes. Almost four o'clock, sir. Well? The intercompany memorandum that you are due to send out, arising from the minutes of yesterday's board meeting, should be ready by then, sir, in order to catch the messengers. Sir. Well, what about? 
about it. Would you like to give it to me now? I'm getting it already. Oh, the memorandum. Uh, yes, what was the subject? A memo to all staff about making personal phone calls and the firm's time. Yes, um, to all heads of departments. The habit of staff wasting company time on personal matters such as uh, phone calls must be discontinued. Uh, the abuse of company time is appalling and furthermore, it is... Furthermore, it has come... Furthermore, it has come... Oh. Furthermore, it has come... You reached a climax? Yes. And so quickly, too. Oh, it was incredibly exciting. Because he was a good lover? Oh, not just that. It was the feeling that we might have been caught at any moment. Of course. That would be an added stimulus, since your whole fantasy was based upon the idea of illicit sex in a chance meeting situation. Oh, I don't think I like the word illicit. Well, we can go into that further next time. Oh, by the way, did you take the job? No. No, of course not. Well, that would have spoilt everything. I don't want to work for a firm that won't let me make personal phone calls. Do I? Case history number 2420, Victoria. Daughter of the 4th Earl of Stockbridge. Educated and exclusive public school for girls, followed by two years in a Swiss finishing school. A society debutant who had one of the last coming out parties of any significance. However, since coming out, she's done very little else. A former member of the so-called Jet Set, she spent most of her time being taken around the world by some very eligible admirers. Or as she puts it, wooing, viewing and screwing. An interesting observation for a future countess. turned her back on that particular scene and has retreated to her father's country seat, spending all of her time at home. Her father is concerned about her, and she refuses even to meet any of the men that he has in mind for her as a potential husband. He seems extremely anxious to marry her off to somebody with a great deal of money. Look for the file. Check that Lord Stockbridge's account is fully paid up to date. Today's appointment is for four o'clock. Please, go right ahead. Is it a help? No, it's a hash. Oh, I thought you'd given all that up. <laughs> Silly. Of course I have. No, oh, this is just a good old cough your heart up tobacco. Honestly. Do you need it? Well, one must have some pleasures in life. Oh, but you could have, did have, all the pleasures that anyone could ask for. You gave all those up. Well, yes, I know, but that was different. Hmm? In what way? Well, it was all so pointless. 
Samaritz in the winter, Saint Tropez in the summer, and Saint Albans in between. Saint Albans? Oh, didn't Daddy tell you about Saint Albans? I am surprised. No, he didn't mention it, actually. Why don't you tell me about it? Well, St. Albans is where you will find the country seat of the Right Honourable Rodney Harrington Harrington. Is he connected with the Harrington Harrington Bank? Oh, darling, he is the Harrington Harrington Bank. Or at least his father is. Rodney is more of a branch at the moment, just waiting to take over head office. And you visit him in St. Albans? Is he a boyfriend or a lover? Oh, heaven forbid. No, I don't visit. I go on an annual pilgrimage. Purely for Daddy's sake, not mine. I don't understand. Well, Daddy knows that Rodney is crazy about me, and he's been trying to marry me off to him for years. Yes. Unfortunately, Rodney Harrington Harrington is also incredibly boring, boring. I can't stand him. Then why do you go? I told you, for Daddy's sake. You see, Daddy banks with Rodney's father, and, uh, well, to be honest, his account is never really very healthy. So I keep up this pretense of romance with Rodney just to avoid any embarrassment. I figure that we can be in the red if I'm in his bed. <laughs> Poetic justice, don't you think? What are you writing? Oh, nothing, nothing. Just a note for my files. Now, where were we? Oh, yes, you were in bed with Rodney Harrington. 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 How long did you spend with him each time? In bed? No, no, on each visit. Oh, I don't know. Just long enough to tire him out. About half an hour, I suppose. Could we be serious, please? Oh, um, yes, I'm sorry, sir. Of course, sir. About two weeks, sir. Really? If this is going to be too much for I'm you, sorry. I'm... I didn't really mean to mark. Actually, it really was about two weeks. But really, I... I don't see the relevance of all this. Well, did you feel cheapened by having to do this? Selling yourself? Oh, I've never felt quite so self-deprecating. With a chauffeured Rolls Royce, my own maid and a butler, well, that was hardly a Piccadilly pickup. Oh, no, I never felt cheapened. With Rodney and his father talking about millions of pounds worth of share transfers over the pheasant, that was hardly possible. Did you ever consider marrying Rodney Harrington? Harrington? Harrington. Mm. At the beginning, when we first went to bed together, purely for the fun of it. What happened? It was awful. Rather like a banking transaction, really. You know, putting it in when you've managed to raise it and withdrawing it just when you need it. With Rodney, it was always a short-term loan. Of course, it did have its compensation. The moments of solitude were immensely enjoyable when I was able to escape from Rodney for an hour or two. Unfortunately, they were few and far between. Victoria! Hey. Victoria! Gosh, there you are. I've been looking for you everywhere. Why? Sorry, Rodney. Didn't you get my note? Oh, yes, I got it all right. I, I found it on your pillow. I just jolly well didn't understand it, that's all. Hmm. To H.R.H. Gone for a walk, so F.U. Be back for more later, V. D. To handsome Rodney Harrington. Ah. Gone for a walk, so follow up. Be back for more later. Victoria, darling. Back. Easy. I see. I see that's jolly clever, Victoria. It's sort of speaking in shorthand. Hey, listen to this. You're like this. A chap came into my bank the other day. Now, he had been at the RAC having a large G&T with his MP, who's an RC and a sort of BBC ITV VIP who was always on the key V about the OPEC. And he suggested that he see me about buying 40,000 shares BP on HP on the QT. And? I said NBG, MYOB, GI, GI, G. Get it, got it good. <laughs> Rodney, where's your father today? 
Oh. Well, I didn't think it was that bad. Oh, well, we had to go up to town. There's something brewing about a big takeover bid in the city. Oh, really? Why didn't you tell me about it? You know how ignorant I am about these high-powered financial dealings that you're so clever at. Oh. Oh. Gosh. Do you really think so? Of course, father helps a bit, too. Oh, yes. Oh, he does, my little tiger. But I'm sure it's you who really makes the big, important decisions. Now, tell me, who is taking over who? Oh, no, Victoria. I couldn't possibly tell you that. I mean, the shares of the companies involved are going to rock it up when this information comes out. I mean, it's, it's all undercover at the moment. Well, why didn't we go upstairs and talk about it before dinner? Undercover. Huh? Victoria, don't be such a tease. Kiss me. In a moment, Rodney. First of all, tell me the names of the companies you were talking about downstairs. No, Victoria, I can't do that. In that case, you can't do that. Oh, Victoria, please. Please? Names. Oh. All right. International Carpets and Consolidated Bedding. I shouldn't have done it before. You're jolly naughty, Victoria. Oh, come on, Rodney. Just once more. Give it to me again. Oh, all right. But you mustn't do anything silly with it. Of course I wouldn't do anything silly with it. As if I would. Well, tell Daddy what stocks and shares buy. Now, give me the names. International carpets are taking over consolidated bedding. Well, that should make for some interesting lane. Oh. Oh, that's a bit tasty, Governor. Wilkins, please don't call me Governor. What is it? Oh, sorry, Governor. Just said uh, it's uh, eight o'clock and grub's up, isn't it? You mean dinner is served? If you like, yeah. Thank you, Wilkins. It's, uh, madam, got to uh, dress for dinner. Of course. Pity. What happened to your old butler? Oh, he died, poor chap. Dashed unfortunate circumstances, too. Just before the savoury. Had to pour my own brandy that night. How did you find Wilkin? Ah, well, that was jolly lucky. His, um, his former employers, the Seymour Orphids, um, were bankrupted by my father. So uh, they had to get rid of their staff, and we grabbed Wilkins. Hmm. I think I might. Do what, Victoria? Oh, well, nothing, nothing. Look, do, do let's have... Dinner. Do you know, after all that exercise, I could eat a horse. Fly. I, um, I do hope you like it. Oh, yes, I do. Uh, what did you say? Uh, what did she say? She said she loves it. Good. Um, uh, you, uh, you can't often get it round here. Well, no, but I am hoping that might change. What did you say? She said it looks like rain. Wait, looks like rain? What's she talking about? Don't ask me, mate. I'm only the butler. I don't get paid for interpreting. <laughs> Mr. Harrington. 
Harrington Harrington tells me that you unfortunately lost your job with your previous employers. Well, that, that is correct, madam. Matter of fact, I was previously in the employ of Lady Seymour Hoffit. Hoffit? Uh, Seymour Hoffit? Not from where I'm standing. <laughs> Well, um, uh, Wilkins, um, what about the next course? Right. Well, darling, um, what, 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 what did you think of the, uh, Coco van? Oh, I thought the van was excellent, but as usual, I could have done with a little more... <clears throat> I'll see what I can do, madam. Um, did she like it? I think she's after a bit more, sir. <laughs> well, uh, give it to her if she wants it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, I said to him, I said, Don, look, old chap. I mean, an investment in, in blue chip government stock uh, will yield eight percent. Uh, compounded, uh, uh, impounded. Uh, compounded. Uh, compounded over five years, term, which is. Uh, <sighs> where was I? Uh, you were writing out my check for Daddy, Tiger. Was hmm? it? Yes, you knew to help with the fees. My missionary school. Oh, mm, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, look, um, see, I, I don't think I, mm, I don't some um, want to go with um, this some school of yours. And to me, it takes you away from me to us. Oh, but don't be silly, Tiger. I think of you mm. all the time. Um, Another nod, well, darling. Mm. He said, just another little nod. Mm. There. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's it. Mm. Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh, darling. Mm. I... I look so... Uh, I'm doing it. Uh, oh. Good night. Sweet Prince, come to think of it, that's just what I may have. You're a nice, even Sunday this summer. Wait! Mum always said that with a lady, you've got to take your time knocking. How immensely perspicacious of her. <laughs> yeah. I thought you might be needing this tonight. Yes, I just might. The right honourable gentleman won't be moving. He'll be there till breakfast time. Is, uh, is there anything else you fancy tonight? Anything else I fancy tonight? Really, your terminology is curious for a butler in such a well-run household. How did you get the job? Oh, well, I was a bit lucky there. <laughs> Not his nib said my boss was bankrupt and I was out of a job. Your Rodney heard about it. He offered me this position. 
But you're no more a butler than I am. Of ah, course cool, so I'm not. That's where the luck comes in. See, I was working in the kitchens, wasn't I? Well, wine cellars, really. Dishing out the bottles of wine for them at dinner time. Yes. Well, when Rodney H.H. asked me what I'd done, I told him that I was a butler. Next thing I knew, he's offered me this job and here I am. <laughs> oh, butler. Oh, how like Rodney. <laughs> well, as you're here, you can bottle for me. You'll find one in the wardrobe. You've scored here, son. Tonight, you could be laying more than the table. And now I shall have to squeeze some juice from you. Hey? Of course, it must be fresh. What? Orange juice for Buckfeast. For A Buckfeast, you know, champagne and orange juice. Oh, orange juice? I don't think we got none. Oh, well, try the kitchen. things. Orange juice. Oh, but glasses. Hey? We should need some glasses. Off you go. Glasses. So you continued this practice because of your father. What made you eventually stop? Well, I saw the futility of it. There was I getting all this credit for Daddy just so that he could send me off wherever and whenever I wanted to go. I mean, it was ridiculous. So you gave it all up, including Rodney? Oh, of course. And you spend all of your time at home? That's right. What do you do? I read. That's all? spend all of my time in the library, studying the history of the Stockbridge family. That doesn't bore you. <laughs> my ancestors were a lot of things, but 
Never boring. Reprehensible, possibly. Rapacious, probably. Romantic, certainly. But boring, never. Romantic? Mm, incredibly romantic. The first countess was abducted by the count on the eve of her impending wedding to a certain Lord Carson. They eloped to Devon in a carriage drawn by four white horses. Oh, that's when I would love to... Yes? Do nothing. Please continue. Well, that's when I would love to have been alive. That's the era I often dream about. You see yourself as a noble woman. Of what period, Elizabethan? Oh, no! Not nearly romantic enough. George and the daughter of the Duke of Stockbridge in the reign of George II. That's my fantasy. Fantasy? Tell me about it. Well, it was a period of rakes and scoundrels, of opportunities and opportunists, soldiers of fortune and soldiers of war. I'm still a countess, of course, but I dream that my family is still immensely wealthy and men come wooing me for my money rather than the other way around. <laughs> Dearest lady, tell me the truth. My, 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 my heart is dying every moment you delay. Is there another man that you love as much as me? Of course not, you silly cuckoo. <laughs> that you should ask such a question. Not even a futa, a passing fancy? Not even that. I, I cannot believe that, Victoria. Oh, one so deserving of love, one so, so worthy of, of any man's affection. Many women are worthy of affection, Lord Woodbridge, particularly yours. Oh. But why do you question me so? Because my heart is empty without your love. Oh. You, you, you say that there's no one else, yet you refuse to show me any affection. You, 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 you let me court you, but you, you don't let me touch you. I'm the happiest of men when I'm away from you and thinking of you. Yet the unhappiest of men when I'm with you and cannot have you. I believe you, Lord Woodbridge, but what would you have of me? A kiss. Nothing else. My dearest, dearest love. Now I know that there's no one else. I know it to be true. Have I your hand? What? A mere kiss, my lord? Oh, mm. 
I realize it's all a violent passion, my dear, but do be careful with your nails. <laughs> this coat was very expensive. <laughs> ah! Who the devil are you, sir? How dare you? Lady Victoria, you seem to be having a little difficulty. Oh, let me give you a hand. Oh, thank you. Oh, Victoria. Oh, Lieutenant Crenshaw, and I thought you were a gentleman. Sorry. Old habits die hard. Lieutenant Cranshaw? So you mean to say you know this, 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 oh, Victoria? I thought he was a common highwayman. Well, there wasn't much happening on the common, so I thought I'd try my luck in the hills. Yes. And what does he mean, old habits die hard? Yes, well, I'm... Lord Woodbridge, allow me to present to you Lieutenant Cranshaw of the Fifth Dragoons. Lord Woodbridge, Lieutenant Cranshaw. Lieutenant Cranshaw is an old father, acquaintance of mine, whom I thought to be still abroad, risking his all in foreign parts, never to return. Obviously. Wounded in battle and returned home. Oh, my poor, poor love. No, no, it is nothing. We must all make some sacrifices for our country. Eh, hey, my lord? When did you return? I landed this two days since. I came straight to you, my love. Mm. You, sir, are a cad and a scoundrel. This lady has promised to me. You jest. She's been spoken for for years. Victoria has promised to me. What a situation. It seems to me that there is only one way to solve it. As I thought. <laughs> Lord Woodbridge, are you ready to receive Lieutenant Cranshaw's fire? Mm. Lieutenant Cranshaw? Ready? Fire! <laughs> oh. 
No wonder we're losing the war. <laughs> My shot, I believe. <laughs> Look, you're right. We should draw lots for her. Whoever's got the longest one gets Victoria. Oh, that's what I'm hoping for. Well, come on, gentlemen, get on with it. Lord Woodbridge. Oh, no, oh, boy, I just shot the groom, remember? Uh, oh, yes, of course you did. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this is ridiculous. You're not trying, either of you. Have you forgotten prize? Is it not a prize worth fighting for? A prize worth dying for? Your shot, I believe, Lord Woodbridge. Climax. Oh, but that's half the fun. Keeping the lady's honor intact. It means that she's always available as a pure, innocent creature when the Marquis comes along. Who? The Marquis of Mitzenberg. You see... Yes, yes, of course. We can go into that more fully next time. Thank you, Victoria. Please come again. History number 2527, Sandra. An extremely interesting subject. Although she desperately wants to be accepted as an ordinary middle-class housewife, she has in fact never been married. Consequently, she's invented a husband and a family and has now come to the stage where she cannot separate fact from fiction. Research shows that she was jilted by her lover on the eve of their wedding and that he ran off with the best man.
never been able to come to terms with this. And in her own mind, the wedding took place, and they have two children, a house in Surbiton and a cocker spaniel. In fact, she lives with her mother in Watford. It is essential to treat the existence of her husband as a reality in order to get her to continue her treatment. Today's appointment, her eighth visit, is for 3.30 p.m. Yes, that's fine. Give us more time together. Uh, do sit down. I won't keep you a moment. Hmm. Been shopping? Oh, I was just... I was just looking at these I things. I thought uh, all you young women of today wore tights. Oh, we do. It's just that... I saw these in the window of one of those shops in Soho, and I don't know how I plucked up the courage, but I went in and bought them. <laughs> they're not for me, though. Oh, I see. No, they're for Colin, my husband. Your husband likes to wear women's clothes? Well, of course he doesn't. But he does like to see me wearing things like this. Colin's always hated tights, and I promised him that on my next trip to London, I would get a pair of nice silk stockings. Look, they've got seams. <laughs> How deliciously decadent. Why does your husband like stockings so much? Oh, come on now. You must be joking. I mean, haven't you ever run your hand up a stockinged leg? Uh, may we talk about you? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I didn't right. mean... Your husband finds them stimulating. Well, yes, I suppose he must do. Not that he ever needs stimulating. He never thinks of anything else. If I'm in the kitchen, for instance, bending over the oven to see if my Yorkshire puddings have risen, and he comes in, next thing I know, he's got both his hands up my skirt and he's putting the meat in. Your husband is highly sexed. You can say that again. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining. Well, then why the suspenders? Ah, well, you see, they are going to be an anniversary present for him, to remind him of the day he proposed to me. Ah, I see. Would you like to tell me about that? Well, yes, you see, I first met Colin when I joined a large pharmaceutical manufacturing firm. Colin was a research chemist and I joined as a trainee. Mr. Foster, come and look at this chemical grouping. It's fascinating. Even then, he was more interested in biological groping than chemical grouping. And you objected to this? Well, of course I did. I mean, I had only been there for two days. Anyway, the girls had all warned me against him. Well, go on. Well, every time he came anywhere near you, he had one hand here, the other hand there, the other hand somewhere else. The handsome chemist, we used to call him. <laughs> and did you continue to reject his advances? Yes, I did. And then he stopped. I got quite offended, so I decided that the next time he tried, I would change my tactics. He had asked me to stay behind one evening to do some overtime on a project I was working on. Unfortunately, he couldn't stay for as long as he hoped. Yeah, well, where is this lecture taking place? Are you sure that nobody else can do it? No, right. OK, sir, I'll do it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bloody hell! No, I'm sorry, Sandra. I wasted your evening by asking you to work late tonight. Professor Langton is due to give a lecture at Manchester University and he can't make it. So he's asked me, no correction, ordered me to go in his place. I'm sorry. Uh, 
night, Richard. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Oh, never mind. I'll work on for a bit anyway. Yeah, and I'd work on you for a bit too if I thought it might do some good. You didn't want to be late for your lecture, do you? Oh, no. What's the subject? Oh, I forgot to ask. Never mind. Nobody listens anyway. Good night, then. Good night. See you in the morning. I remember that it was a very hot summer that year and I couldn't bear to wear even a thin blouse under my uniform. I decided to freshen up before going home. So I went to one of the sinks for a quick wash. Oh, oh my God! Oh. oh! You frightened me to death. I didn't hear you come in. No, I could see you were busy, so I thought I wouldn't uh, disturb you. I thought you were in a hurry. Oh, I am. I forgot my papers. I just remember what the subject was. What? The effects of the naked female body on the fibres of y fronts. Oh, wow. Oh, Sandra, I'm crazy about you. I love you, I love you. Oh, oh, me too, Colin. Hey, you love you? You. I love you, silly. Oh, Sandra. Come on, get up on the bench. What? I love my work at this bench, and I, I dream of having you off it. Oh. Please get up. Sandra, will you marry me? What? I thought you just wanted a quick session. I do, I do, but I thought you might say no. Do I not like the reluctant virgin? No, we can have it both ways. A quick one now, and a wedding later. Sandra. Oh, lovely. Oh. Oh. oh, Sandra. Oh. Oh. I can't get it in. I'm not surprised. I've still got my tights on. Have you? Yeah. Oh. dislocated his shoulder and broke his arm in two places. Hence the stockings. On every date after that, he would always check before we went out by running his hand up my leg to see I wasn't wearing tights. I fooled him one night, though. I didn't put on anything underneath. What happened? We didn't go out. This practice stopped after you were married, I take it? Well, no, not at first. I mean, it was our little game, you see. But later on, after the first baby was born, well, then I went back to wearing tights. After the first baby? Mm. I see. Did this have any effect on your husband's feelings towards you? How do you mean? Well, did he still make love to you as often? Oh, well, of course he did. I mean, whatever I wear doesn't make any difference. I'm sure that he thinks that having it off will be an Olympic event one day and that he just keeps in training. He sees me as a sort of a walking, no-lying-down version of the marathon. <laughs> I wouldn't mind, but I don't have to do anything, you see. I don't understand. Well, I don't have to encourage him in any way. Get him all worked up, get him panting for it. And you would like to? Oh, yes. I mean, take last week, for example. I spent over an hour in the bath. I put on a new perfume and a new nighty, and then, pow, in he comes, leaps on me, and, well... You know? Yes. Yeah. Well, the next day I was cleaning up the boiler and Colin comes home unexpectedly. There I was, filthy dirty, with my head stuck up the flue pipe and POW! He's at it again! I mean, it makes no difference, you see. He just uses my body. And do you feel that you're losing your femininity? Oh, exactly. Oh, you do understand a woman, don't you? Yes, maybe continue. How would you like the problem to be resolved? Well, I would like to see the roles reverse. Get me to turn Colin on. Give him the hots for me. Make him wild with passion before he even got anywhere near me. <laughs> Describe it to me. Well, I imagine that everything starts off very normally and I work up to it. Where would you like it? On the table, as usual, love. Now, that would normally be enough on its own. That looks nice. I hope you like it. I've made a bit of a cock-up of it, I'm afraid. Tastes all right to me. Oh, pass the sauce, please, love. Oh. Anything else? No, that's 
just fine, right? Uh, would you like a bit of mine? Hmm. If you're not hungry, love, wasting up, what not? Uh, would you like another plate? No, this one's fine. Two lumps. To put two lumps in. Now it's King slipping the tackle well past Thompson. Trying to get past John, but he's beaten there. Well beaten. He's been dominating the left. But he's been brought in. Need it next week. Oh, oh. oh. Hello. Oh, big boy. How'd you like to make a lady happy? Oh. Careful, love. You'll crease me trousers. Oh. Or if you want to forget the happy. Oh. How'd you like to make a lady? Come on. Do you fancy a game of cards? Right. What do you want to play? How about a game of strip poker? Sandra, you can't play poker. Come on, what should we play? Snap. Snap? Yes. All right. Ready? Snap. Oh, dear. I lose that one, don't I? Mm. What are you doing? Well, I may not be able to play strip poker, but I can play strip snap. Strip snap? Oh, come on. Don't be a small sport. Come on, it's snap again. This is ridiculous. You're not even trying, are you? You haven't won one hand yet. Oh, what's wrong? Well, it's snap again. <gasps> snap again! All right, I win. Come on, it's time for bed. Oh! Look, turn the light out before you go. I told you to lie down. I meant all of you. 
Oh! I see you have raised a protest. Then you must take the full punishment. Oh, no. No, no. If going to take the punishment, it's you! Oh! Oh! It still ends with him making love to you. Oh, of course it does. I never intended to deny him. Just to tease him. Well, yes, it's like you said, femininity. You did say I was very feminine, didn't you? Uh, yes, that's right, I did. Well, then, that's that. What should we talk about next? Well, actually, you've overrun your time already. I'm sorry. You want me to go, don't you? You don't like me. Well, of course I do, Sandra. It's just that I do have other people to see. Please come again next week. Oh! Oh, yes. I'll get my husband to look after the two children. Nurse, are you there? Yes, sir. Ah, good morning. Morning. Come in, will you please? Yes, sir. Ah, uh, come in. Oh, good. You're ready for those notes. Fine. Uh, sit down, will you? Right? Yes. The psychological effect on emotionally unstable women that can be caused by men in a position of trust. The relationship between a doctor and a patient... Excuse me, sir. You haven't forgotten your appointment with Marion, have you? Marion? Marion? Case 2310. Sexual relations with relations. A depressive... Yes, uh, thank you, nurse. Oh, is she here now? Oh, yes. Oh, right. Send her in, will you? Sir. We'll finish this up later. <laughs> Marion. Ah, Marion, come in. Hello. Sit down. Hello. Well, how are we today? Oh, OK. Just OK. You seem rather elated. I've come again. Yeah, I can see that. You're here. No, no. He put it in again. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm lost. Who put what in again? Mr. Johnson. Mr. Johnson? Yes. He put the advert in the paper again, and I answered it again. And the same thing happened. Marion, have you seen your mother recently? He decided to give me a shorthand test. I think we ought to talk about your mother, but where are you living now? But I could tell he fancied me. It was those eyes. Rather like yours, they were. Um, uh... Of course, he couldn't resist me. And we did it again. Under the desk. Under the desk. Um, nurse! Nurse! In here, quick! It was wonderful. I'm going again next week. Uh, Marion, you must control yourself. Marion, please, uh... Oh, no, Marion, we mustn't get carried away, must we? After all, we don't want him struck off, do we? For taking advantage of pretty young patients. Uh, right, uh, Marion, see you uh, next... Um, mm, yes, fine, thank you. I think she's improving. Look here, nurse. Don't get the wrong impression. She's just very, um, very... Pretty. Yes, pretty. Good heavens, nurse. What do you think I am? Who's next? Oh, Lady Stockbridge. Case number 2420. Ancestral problems. I ought to mention... Yes, thank you, nurse. I can remember some case histories. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. Warn me? Lady Victoria, I'm sorry, I'm somewhat thrown. And I'd forgotten that I'd had the couch moved. It doesn't look as if it's been moved to me. Are you all right? Yes, yes, I'm fine. Would you like to sit down? <laughs> Tell me, why are you wearing those clothes? Balls. Well, that was a perfectly civilised question. Oh, no, I mean fancy dress balls. I've been advised one this week, and I've just been to the costumist to hire my gown. 
Do you like it? Yes, yes, most becoming. <laughs> so you're getting out and about. Well, that's good. <laughs> Tell me, who is escorting you to these um, functions? Oh, a dashing military man. You'd like him. Lieutenant Crenshaw. Lieutenant Crenshaw? He's awfully good looking. And I do hope he's a good dancer as well. Tell me, Victoria, have you seen your father recently? I imagine he's frightfully good at the military two-step. How's your two-step? Um, look, Victoria, we haven't got time for all this. Please. Oh, Lieutenant, tell me, is your war wound any better? Now, listen, Victoria, I am not Lieutenant Crenshaw. I am your psychiatrist. <laughs> well, in that case, I've got something to show you. Look! Oh, my God! Uh, now, now, look, Victoria. Uh, please be careful. It's not loaded, is it? Of course not. Don't be silly. Well, anyway, you'd better give it to me. I knew it's not your shot. Victoria, give me the gun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he won't miss it. <laughs> oh, but I do. No. Oh, John. 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 Oh, John. 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 My, my, we are having problems today, aren't we? If we could manage to keep our hands off the patients, it would help. But Doctor. you don't understand, nurse. She, she shot it off. Well, perhaps that will slow you down a little. And might I suggest a cold towel wrapped firmly around the head for an hour or two to cool you off? Now, look here, nurse. I will not be spoken to. Ah, nurse, I... I don't think I'll see any more patients today. Uh, please cancel all other appointments. Yes, I think that would be advisable. Today does appear to have been something of a struggle for you. Go home and sleep it off. Yes, thank you, nurse. Cooey, it's only me. Uh. I just remembered something I wanted to tell the doctor. I'm afraid the doctor can't see you, Sandra. But I've come back specially. I'm very sorry, Sandra. No, no, that's all right, nurse. I'll, I'll see Sandra, but no one else. Understood? I'm not sure I understand anything anymore. <laughs> You've been shopping again? No. Oh, good. No, I was only just going to be... The coat! You brought the coat. You expect me to wear this, don't you, eh? I want to put it on. Well, I won't, do you hear? I won't. You'd like me to make an exhibition of myself, wouldn't you, eh? Hmm? Act out a little fantasies for you. Well, I refuse, do you hear? I absolutely refuse. Well, I will no. not play these silly games, will you? Well, no, I mean, I, mean, yes. I was just going to... You want me to expose myself, don't you, eh? Oh! Oh! Yes. Act out the little perversions. Well, I won't, do you hear? That's what you want, isn't it? Hmm? Hmm? No. I was just going to take you to the cleaners. Oh, terribly sorry, Sandra. What came over me? You must apologise. Mm. Oh, look, I don't leave just yet. Um, no, I don't want to stay here with you. I'm going back to my mum. These people are normal in Watford. I think you ought to see a doctor. to patients. My, my, doctor, this sexual therapy isn't having a very good effect on you, is it? Perhaps you should take up chiropody and work your way up. After a while, you'll reach the knees and then you can move on to higher things. Now, look, nurse. Oh, calm, doctor. I'm not silly. I know why you wanted to cancel those appointments. It's me, isn't it? Hmm? You've always desired me. You've always wanted me. Now, just a minute. My glasses. What are you doing? I can't take any more. I can't stand it. Leave me alone. 
will, will you? Thank you. Oh, hello, Dr. Gill. Oh, Nurse Addison here. Uh, that's right, Dr. Boyd's nurse. Uh, could I make an appointment for him to see you on Monday? I... I think he needs a little... help. The way I feel Come here to me I know you'll see That breaking Some more.